Okay, so uh, let's start. So hello everybody. Hello once again. So in this series of uh, multiple trainings for related to DevOps. So uh, my name is Sanjay Best and today I'm going to discuss with you uh, regarding the version control system and specifically about Git. So uh, that's the agenda for today. Um, we are going to see what is an version control system uh, different type of version control systems, uh, something about Git and GitHub. Uh, normally, people get confused um, between these two terms and Git, the workflow, and the branch strategies. Okay, uh, just one point uh, since I am looking at the presentation itself, so if somebody you want to ask a question um, and he raised a hand, so I may not be able to see it. So if you have any question, just unmute yourself and uh, and ask. Okay, so let's start with the first point, version control system. So um, what are versions? So I assume everybody is aware about different versions. Uh, to keep the history of the different changes, we normally create versions for the files or the documents. So what is a version control system? Version control system is basically a mechanism by which a tool or a system tracks and manages the changes. And it keeps track of uh, each and every modification. Uh, who has done the modification and what is the modification done? For example, if it is a document file, uh, if person A has created that file, and uh, after some times person B uh, adds a paragraph to it, this tool will capture all those points. Why? why basically we need uh, this kind of a control mechanism system so you might have seen um, during your studies or or different point in time uh, some documents that in the document we create a kind of a table in which we mention uh, who has created it uh, what are the changes he has done on which date the modification has been done so we call that as a virgin history so you might have seen that in in the documents so that's a manual way of keeping track of different things. Uh, but with the version control system uh, coming into the picture, that is the tool um, it helps us to uh, enable different users to work on a same piece of file or a group of files. So to allow multiple users to work in parallel. And the second main important thing, uh, though version control system are used for many, 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 many scenarios, and they have different advantages. But one of the main uh, advantage of having a version control system is to it allows us to roll back our changes if we have done something by mistake. So at any given point in time, we can reach to a, a point where we will see uh, a stable version. So for example, if we have a code repository and uh, currently it is on on 29th, it has a state. So let's say uh, on 30 and 31st, somebody did some modifications and by mistake, he deleted some files or corrupt our code. So version control system will allow us to roll back the system to, but to today's date, even after two days. So that's the tracking mechanism it does. Okay, any, any questions in, in versions or version control system? I think it is fairly simple. Okay. Uh, regarding the version control, the types of version control systems, we have two, basically two main type of version control systems. One is central and the second is distributed. Let's see what are the, what are these? So in a central version control system, what does it have? It has a main server, which we call as a repository and multiple users connect to the main repository they up take the code or the file from that system to their local machine they work on it so that is called uh, that has been shown it as update here so they update our local systems from the repository and they take complete code to their system they do the changes do the modifications and once they are satisfied they commit the code back to the repository 
so after some time if person two um, wants to work on it he can take the latest code from the repository to his or her local machine and do the changes and update it so in that way we have a centralized location where all the code is present uh, all the time and different users looking at the repository they will see, see the same image of a particular file or a particular code is it fine okay so uh, if you see in the, in the central version control system uh, it was the old system which was used um, in the it it industry and for the common files basically let's say there is a file called common.js in this repository that has to be worked upon by different users so what happens in that case one of the user is basically first from first services so whoever wants to work on that file he creates a log on that file and he start updating that file so if someone else has to work on that file he cannot work on it because he see that there is a log on that file and he cannot work on that so that that, that was one of the limitation um, in this central version control system that at a given point in time only one person can update a common file but from the uh, version controlling point of view it was very useful uh, all the because of this all the different users will see a same image of a repository at at all time right and it, it has all the all the features of uh, whatever we have discussed earlier it it manages all the changes this tracks all the changes um, it allows us to roll back to a given given tag um, to a stable version. So all those facilities were there in the central version control system. After that came another system, which is called distributed version control system. What happens here? We have a common repository in this case also, where the complete code is present. Apart from this common repository, these repositories are also present and these are present on the local machine so let's say we have three users in this case so whoever wants to work on this repository he takes a pull from that repository so when he takes the pull the complete repository will be cloned i mean copied to his local machine and on his local machine also he a repository will be created so you can say a server repository and a local repository now in this case he takes a pull and he start doing changes for his code he can do as many he can take the update and he can do the commit so in in the previous case as you have seen the update and the commit are done from the main repository but in distributed system the commit and updates are done from its its local repository and the user can do as many commits as he wants he can maintain internal versions for his code as many internal versions as he wants and he do the commit to its local repository so unless he is going to push it to the main server all the changes are present in his local machine are will only be visible to that particular user user one so same is for user two and user three so they can keep on working on their personal repositories as long as they want and once they are satisfied that their code is now in a stable version uh, in a stable condition they can then push it to the main main server and when someone else wants to merge or wants to take a pull from that repository at that time he will also see the changes from the user one also okay so that's the main difference between centralized version control system and distributed version control system so in distributed version control we have two two level of repositories present so, okay any questions in the central and distributed deposit uh, version control systems okay i take it as no okay so uh, if we go forward um, what is the div I mean, what are the differences? Not exactly the differences, but what are the distinguishing features of the two version control systems? So, in the central, in the centralized version control system, one of the main advantage of the centralized system is that it is very easy to learn. 
So if you are a fresher from a college uh, and we do not know about the version controlling and the different things, you are still learning about versions, how to maintain it, how what should be the nomenclature, the naming, the code commenting style, etc. So on top of it, learning the version control system will, will be an added burden. So for that case, centralized version control system is very helpful. It is very easy to learn. You nothing has to do. You, ju you just have to take the latest from the the, the 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 remote repository you have to check out and start your work so it is it's blunt uh however in the centralized version control system if you see the this is the main repository and somehow if this repository is corrupted or this this uh, server is down then our whole code or the whole document the group of documents will be at risk so it's a single point of failure the centralized version control system Whereas if you see uh, the distributed version control system, we have different uh, benefits, like it is very fast as compared to centralized version control system. Uh, any guesses why it is fast from central, by central version control system? Anyone? Any guesses why the distributed button control system is faster to work with as compared to central button control system? Yeah, like uh, systems are working fine, uh, like on offline mode, and is faster um, than like uh, CVS. Uh, Yes, exactly. So uh, as, you, as you see in the distributed version control system, we are working. So if I uh, take the, sorry, if I take the bottom two bars here, the local and the workstation, this is nothing but your own system, the machine on which you are working, your laptop or desktop. So in the distributed version control system, you are working with your own machine as well. There is no network coming into the picture and uh, unless you push or pull. So that's why it is very fast as compared to the central the control system where whenever you want to update something uh well sorry whenever you want to commit something to the repository you have you you are dependent on the network speed your files will be checked in to the main repository which is on the server which is somewhere else but that, so that's why the distributed version control system is very fast second advantage is that even if your network is not working as as we said um, you can work in an offline mode because once you take the pull from the repository, all the code, uh, all the files are present on your local system. And if you see, it's not uh, like if you see here, the name is given as working copy. It is said repository. Here also, there is a repository on the server, there is a repository on the local. So by repository, it means all the things that you are committing, this repository is keeping track of all the changes. Right. The difference between working copy and the repository is that working copy is whenever you save it, control s, your previous changes are gone. The repository is something where the system itself is keeping track of all the changes. What you have committed now, what you have committed yesterday, what you had committed the day before. So all the changes are meant are kept here also. So, so you can work on offline mode. And when we see single point of failures in the central mode. In the distributed mode, once you have taken the pull from the repository, the whole repository is cloned to your uh, local one. You can see all the versions, all the history of whatever are present here. So even if this repository has gone down after you have taken pull, your code is safe. All the history is maintained. So it's, it's not a single point of failure. You have replicated the repository to different workstations. Uh, in the distributed uh, button control system, it is easy to work with branches. Um, if you are aware that uh, in the in any version control system or uh, any tool that is maintaining versions, uh, one of the feature is to create some branches. Like there is a main uh, trunk, and from that trunk you can cut a branch to create on a particular feature. So in the in the distributed system, it is easy to work on branches because here you are working locally with your local systems and uh, with, with the central it's because of the network thing coming into the picture that's why it is hard to work there 
the center manifold system just keep in mind it it also allows you to create different branches from the main branch you can cut a branch for your specific feature but with the distributed it is easier to work okay any questions on on the, the centralized and the distributed version control system okay fine okay let's now let's move to what is git and versus what is github so it is uh, one of the major thing that people got get confused with these two terms because the names are very similar what is git what is a github so anybody in this room who is aware about um, about the, the difference so one thing i have, I have already shown that git git is a version control system that it is a tool uh, which helps us to to manage to track the different versions of a of a file or a code file it it tracks who has done the changes when the changes are done uh, what are the changes it it keeps uh, there is a facility to to put a tag um, work commit so that we can roll back to that tag at any given point in time okay so uh, what is github then github uh, github is very different from a version control system first of all it is not a version control system it's not a tool github is basically a host of source code it is a place where people can keep their source code and github is using git github has, has the repositories a git repositories where people can keep their code and it's a, it's a um open source thing where you can keep your public uh, repositories which can be used by other other persons as well so if you want to see a particular code you can see it uh, in in the github you can search for some particular open source things and you can use it so github is basically a place where multiple you will see multiple repositories multiple git, git repositories where the source code the code is preserved by different persons right okay okay uh, there, there, there is one more term called gitlab so gitlab is similar to github it also provides uh, it is also a place uh, where the source codes are are hosted with uh, almost similar to github with some basic differences like how many public uh, repositories you can create with how many collaborators etc but mainly it is again a host of source code so don't get confused between git github and gitlab basically so git is a repository okay so uh, after being uh, gone through the basic terms terminologies um, so let's see what what actually a git is so as i said git is a version control system and git basically works on a distributed version control system so it, it is a distributed version control system where you have a centralized repository on the server then you have a repository on your local machines and you work with those local machines uh, as long as you want to the to do the commit and finally you push the code to the centralized repository so basically how to access the git uh, you have two common ways to access the git one is through cli the command line interface and the second one is through some gui tools there, there are many many tools uh, that you can use uh, to access the git and in some code uh, coding ides also you the coding id also are integrated directly to the git so from your code while doing the code from there also you can directly check in check out the files uh, to the git repository okay okay so um, any idea why uh, the two modes of cli are sorry two mode of access are given the cli as well as the gui because we all know gui uh, is always easier to use um, we can e easily do all the push pull merge check in check out uh, 
from it from GUI. But why did the CLI is uh, provided? Okay. It's not only on, only for the Git, but uh, basically you have seen in most of the cases, uh, like even in the Windows, uh, a command line interface is provided. Even in AWS has given two ways of working. So any idea why why there is always a CLI given, CLI code syntax is provided? Okay, uh, as you know, if we go uh, forward uh, in this DevOps, uh, I mean, DevOps sessions, you will see there are different tools that work with Git repository, like there are Jenkins tools, which will uh, automatically pull the code from the repository and do the build and deploy it on different environments. So there, uh, we always use a command through which the code is uh, pulled or the tag is uh, is written to a repository. So all those things are done through the CLI only. So wherever we have to use a system by another system, we always need a command line interface. So that's why the CLI is, is provided. And of course, the GUI tools are provided to make it a user-friendly uh, user -friendly interface. OK. Uh, so, out of the two ways to use uh, Git, uh, the CLI, in the CLI, basically, whenever you install Git in your machine and you right-click on the on the folder, you will see these kind of options. So, Git Bash, Git Bash is the interface for running the CLI for the Git. And once the prompt is open, you will have different options like this. Uh, oh, sorry, you have different commands like this. You will write, you will use one of these command, like git init is used to create a new repository. First time you are using it. Clone is basically to uh, get a repository from, um, sorry. So clone will, what will clone do is basically take a repository from the main server and it will uh, create a repository on your local machine. So for that clone is as well. So like that, we have different uh, list of commands that we use in the git bash. On the other hand, we have tool. Uh, so here I have pasted the image for the tool source tree. Uh, it is one of the tool. Uh, before using it, just check with, uh, with the IT team and, and your technical leads which tool you should be using. Um, because of the licensing constraints or other things. So the, the so all the tools will be similar. It will give you all the facilities like to commit, to pull, push, etc., to create a branch, all these things. Okay. Regarding the git, the git workflow, so how does the git work basically? Any questions so far? Yeah, uh, one question. Uh, uh, we saw like uh, we can configure with uh, Git, uh, some like GitHub or GitLab. Uh, even there is one more, I think Bitbucket also we can configure with. So uh, is any particular the use case uh, so that we can choose uh, which repository we can use or any particular? Purpose for this between bit uh, bit bucket GitHub and GitLab. Yeah, yeah. So choose okay. Um. Okay, so I'm not very much sure. Uh, I think bit bucket is is licensed. One of these is uh, is is a licensed one. Uh, oh. Other two other two are free. So so that can be one of the use case. But I'm I'm not very much sure uh, how. How these are different because from the functional point of view, all these three uh, provide the similar kind of facilities. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Anyone else? Okay, so uh, basically, let's see how the Git, uh, how the complete workflow goes. So we have a, a remote repository. So when we start working, we will, we will before starting to work, we will take a pull from the remote repository. So that's this line. And when we say pull, all the code from the com, the remote repository will come to our local repository. And then what we will do, we will start working on it. So, so there is something called a working directory and a staging area. So these two are not, uh, in, in fact, these three are, are not something physical. You will not see different folders for it, but these will be maintained internally by the Git itself. So internally, it is managing what are the files which are in working directory, which is called unstaged file. What are the files that are in staging area, which is called staged file. And what are the files that are already committed, which are in the in the repository. So these different files are maintained by Git itself. You will not see it in the physically in the files, the different folders. So when we pull the code from the, the remote repository, all the code will come to our local local repository and then we start working on it. If it's a new file, we will do a git add. Um, if, uh, if it's a new file, we will first have to do a git add. And after doing git add, it will be present in the staging area. And once when we do the commit, if it is an existing file or a new file, which is already being git add, then we do git commit. And after git commit, it will be added to the repository. So this, this loop, we can do it as many times as we want un until our whole work is complete. So it may be for the two days, two weeks, or even for the month, depends on what kind of um, development you are working. If, if it's a defect fix, it may be only for the one day. It, it, if it is a feature, it can go long for two, one or two weeks. So once after your all the commits, uh, once you are satisfied that my code is now completely done and my functionality is properly working, I do a git push. And once I do a git push, it will push all my code from my local repository to the remote repository. So after I have done the git push, if somebody take a git pull to his or her machine, he will see my code as well. But if it if somebody takes a git pull before I, I do a git push, he will not uh, get the code which I am working on. Right? So we do have a different features. Then there is something called git checkout. So it is something like a scenario where let's say you are working on a, on a new feature for an application. You take a take a pull from the from the remote repository to a machine and you start working on the on the feature which will which is a task of two weeks but let's say in between your lead or your manager comes to you and says that hey we have a defect in the production and uh, that is required to be fixed very quickly so now you have to work on a different branch because this new feature that you are working is not supposed to be delivered to the production right now but that fix is required to be delivered immediately so what you do at that time, you do a git checkout. So what git checkout does, so definitely you will take a git pull. You will create another repository for that particular uh, defect. And then you will do a git checkout. So when, as soon as you do a git checkout, your working directory will be changed. So let's say before your feature branch name is uh, new development and the new branch name is, uh, defect fix so as soon as you do a git checkout your working directory will change from uh, feature branch to new uh, from new development to defect fix right then you uh, do the fix and you do a commit you do a push your uh, branch will be pushed back to the repository and then you do a git checkout again and you switch to your previous uh, feature branch and you start working on it Is it clear? Good check out. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So um, I assume all the all, all the things are pretty straightforward uh, because with that, um, I mean, the content of the course is almost complete. So I, I assume after the, after the session, the all the things of uh, regarding the Git uh, will be okay to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then the next topic is basically branch strategies. So uh, as we said that. The version control system, one of the feature of the version control system is to provide, uh, let you work with the branches also. So, uh, so that is what branching is. Basically, you have a here, as you see, you have a main branch, uh, which is in the blue color. And out of that branch, you want to work on a particular feature. Yeah, so you cut a branch from there, uh, the green one, and you start working on it. And after a point in time, you merge it back to the main main branch. So any uh, anyone can tell me why we need a feature branch? Why need, we need to cut it? Why not we work on directly the main one? So maybe uh, we do not want to like disturb uh, current work. Maybe the parallel working we are going on. So we like creating particular respective feature branch. Okay. Yes, that is one. That is one reason. Uh, yes, you are right. Absolutely right. The main, the one of the main reason is not to disturb the main branch. So it allows us to um, check our code. Once we do our code, it allows us to check that everything is working fine. And if it is working fine. Then only we should merge it back to the main branch. So other regions are basically, uh, as we see in the beginning, that uh, the version control system allows us to work parallelly on the different things. So if we have two or three different features getting developed uh, for a particular release, so we can have one branch from here. So at the same time, uh, another person can can cut a branch. Uh, for his feature, then we can have two, three, four, five, as many branches as we want to work. So people can work on on the on their particular features. And another main re another reason is that this main branch uh, is something because in every application, mostly three developments are going in parallel uh, for any application which is already live. So one is the maintenance work. That is the uh, production defects uh, that are required to be delivered quickly, any critical production defect. The second is the release, which is in QA UAT, which is the next release going to the production. And the third one is the current development, which is still under the development phase. So if you want these three releases, these three development work to be going parallel, we maintain different branches. So when from wherever the fix is required or wherever the, the code changes are required, the developer will uh, commit his or her code to that branch, that particular branch only. Like for example, in this case, if you take a scenario of only two different branches, one is for the production and then second one is for the development. There is no specific QA release here in this particular scenario, let's assume. So if there is a, at this stage, for example, there is a uh, defect from the production. It says that we have a critical defect and that requires a fix. And let's assume this, this date is very far after two months, but this fix is required only uh, immediately, maybe within one week. So for that case, the, 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 the developer will pull the code from here, create a branch from here, and do the changes uh, in his branch and do the merge immediately. And this will definitely go to the production immediately. In this particular scenario, which I have just explained, what he has to do 
one more thing he has to do extra also can anyone guess in the scenario is basically there is a main branch going on here uh, at this time a production critical defect is identified a developer creates a branch uh, creates a feature branch from here and he develops his code merge the branch and send the code from here so can anyone see a miss here or a something that is required to be done by that developer or someone So what will happen if that person has changed a code here and he has bunched here? You see the, uh, the green line? This, this developer has taken the branch from here. So whatever is done here, this branch will not be having that code. So what that developer has to do, whatever changes he has done, uh, whatever push he has done here, the same push for the code he has to done here also so either he will convey the changes to that uh, like for example if it is a production defect then let's assume it's a small change like uh, if if condition is missing or a null check is missing something like that so either he has to uh, do the same changes in this branch also or he will tell that developer that hey i have done this change please incorporate it in your code also otherwise what will happen the fix that has been done here once this feature branch is merged at this point in time and the code has uh, gone to production here so that change will also reappear does that make sense yes okay okay fine so um, so that is basically branches uh, what is what the, what a branching is and and how how is it useful so if you see uh, as a standard here in the in the industry we have these five branches which will normally be present in uh, in any of the code uh, that we will see the first one is main or uh, we also call it as a master branch so whenever we create a repository uh, whenever we do git in it a master branch is created by default then we have a development branch or develop branch you might have heard it uh, the, the develop branch so this is mainly the branch on which the code is maintained so as a standard practice we do not uh, do changes directly in the master branch so as we, we as we see somebody has said that why we create a branch here we do not want to uh, disturb the main code here so the development is never done on the master branch so in most of the systems you always have a master branch along with a develop branch so this is the main branch in which the code is being maintained then we have a feature branch the same example we can see uh, yes Okay, I thought there is a there is a question. Okay, so um, so from the develop branch, uh, mainly you cut some branches for your feature development. So that is called the feature branch. Feature branch is nothing but it's a you can say it's a particular requirement branch for a particular requirement. Then we have a branch something called release. So in most of the applications what is done during the development phase many de different development teams are working uh, in parallel so once the for example there is a team for the new development there is a team for uh, the maintenance defects which are not required immediately but uh, which can be clubbed with the releases 
and there are some defects which can be from there so from some other non functional requirements like performance improvement etc so all those uh, once everything is done and all those teams merge back their branches to the main or the, the development branch so from the development branch just before the release uh, this release branch is created and from this release branch because before this release branch all the work is being done in the different features so different teams are working independently or their different particular uh, requirements so once the, the release branch is created after that the code is deployed on a integration server or some some server where the testing is done before the prod deployment so, so mostly the release branch is used for that then there is a branch called hotfix so as you can guess from the name itself uh, this branch is mainly for a fix that is required immediate deployment uh, mostly it is, it is for production environments where we get a critical defect and it cannot wait for a particular release like i give the example here so for that the hotfix is required hotfix branch is required so typically these are the main branches that you see in your uh, environment feature branch you can have more than one but others mostly are there is only only one branch so every branch has a lifetime so for example a hotfix branch or a release branch or even a feature branch uh, once the development is done and it is merged back to the main main branch so then we can destroy it we, sh we should destroy it because otherwise there will be number of branches that are not used okay so based on this um, so you have you should have been uh, able to get the basic idea about the kit and the different version controls what are these uh, how these are useful for us and how you can uh, use git specifically in a in a distributed version control system um, so based on that for the for, i have uh, put some link here uh, which you can you, you may use for the different uh, git um, functionalities keywords you will for, for further learnings these two are the links uh, i have also pasted a document here which will give you uh, okay i just show you okay i need to change the mode just a minute So this is the document that I have presented uh, pasted there. So this is it. Basically, has all the basic Git CLI commands that you can you can refer um, that you may use along with the description why that command is used. Okay, so that that might be useful for you to use the Git uh, from the CLI mode. Uh, from the GUI mode, uh, as I mentioned, just check with the with team members the it department also which tools you can install uh, based on the, the licensing uh, requirements and that this then then this is something uh, from where you can uh, download the git itself and uh, you can start using install it on your machine because as as i mentioned uh, it is a software that will create a repository as well on your uh, local machine so it's not a simple client it will install the complete git uh, tool in on your system through which you can use the git for you okay any questions
was from my side uh, i am done with the presentation if you have any questions you may ask now Okay, fine. If you do not have any questions, then thank you so much for your time and patiently listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello?